I'm in a women's chorus in Denver called Skyline. It's about 140 women and we sing um, four-part harmony in the barbershop style. I'm wanting to join a quartet and the voice part that I sing is the lead, which is the most common one, but they need a tenor. So they're trying to encourage me to try singing tenor, which is, it's pretty far out of my range right now. For work, I'm doing massage therapy, going to the Rolf Institute for school. Cause baby, there ain't no mountain high enough. So if working with Heather would open up my capacity to take in more air and use that um, in my vocal production, that would be really, really exciting for me. I want to introduce that to all aspects of my life and my work. So what I'm looking for now, Mary, is what catches my eye when I see you walking? Mm -hmm. I'm just doing a, a total scan to just see. And so, yeah, I'll walk with you. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, two things are catching my eye. Mm -hmm. All right. One is that you're very quiet up here. So, there's not a whole lot of movement through this very upper part where you feel some tension. Mm -hmm. and the other is that. I see you leaning back quite a bit as you walk. Oh, yeah. Um, so normally I would use the mirror right here for a second. Could you stop? And just see how much this upper part of your body is behind. Can you, can you see that? Uh, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So if I put you on top of yourself, now your shoulder would be over your hip. And this whole curve here softens. And you probably feel totally weird. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because this is, this is so, yeah, that's good, that's it. So that, we'll come so, back to this. Okay. But that's important because that's putting a lot of stress here in your neck. Because um, um, uh -huh. you're, you're, can you see what happens to me when I do that? Mm -hmm. And if I come on top of myself, then all of this can ease. Mm. Yeah, but we'll work with it first on the table. Okay. And what happens is your kinesthetic sense is going to get disoriented because you've been, this is straight. Mm -hmm. That's what your kinesthetic sense And when you actually do get straight, you feel like you're this. <laughs> yes? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Come lie on the table then. Sure. I'd like to just have you watch your breath for a few minutes. No notice from your pelvic floor to your crown, where does it move most easily? And where does it feel restricted? Uh, most of the movement feels low mm -hmm. and less so into the chest. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing also. So one, let's play with something now here. What I'm seeing is you've got your ch chin kind of tucked in. Uh -huh. And probably that's because you wear your hair the way you do that. If you lie down, that little bun is going to mean that you have to do this. Mm. So I'm going to actually lift my hands are just a touch cold. I'm sorry. I'm going to lift your head. Let your chin come up just a little more. So this space under here, even more. Just go wild. Yeah, exaggerate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> going to go way up. I'm not going to leave you here. Okay. Take, a, take a breath now and see how that feels. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> what do you notice? Um, a lot more expansion in here. Yeah, yeah. So bring your chin back down where it was. So that's your habitual spot. Wow. Yeah, and feel how this is closed now, right under here. If you come up a little bit, that space opens. And when you come just down even a little bit, it starts to close. Yeah? Mm hmm. And when it closes, now you're already not going back as far as you were, which is fine. Yeah. When it's closed, your breath is, move, the movement of your breath is coming up and it hits a still spot and you have an impact there. Watch it on me for a second. Can you see the movement kind of bunch there? I think okay, so. and if I let my head come up, go through. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> down here. So find the space under your chin. Yeah, that's about right. And now explore your breath again. And just see. 
And just be with this for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. What's it like to have breath in your chest? That's actually where your lungs are, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Okay, now, when we're doing rough movement, contrast is a very powerful tool. Mm. So come back to your familiar and feel your breath. Mm. It's much lower. Yeah, yeah, and you're just, it's restricted here. Yes. So come back up now, let's just play with that. Mm. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> What's happening? That's that's just so impressive to me. Yeah, it's big. So subtle. Yeah, yeah it's not and subtle. Powerful. <laughs> it's not subtle. A subtle change. It so seems. yeah, in Ralph movement, lots of times moving this far, you can't see it from the last row in the balcony, but <laughs> it makes a big difference. So mm. yeah. <laughs> okay. So stay with that now, and I want to add something else. Think of the joint between your head and your your atlas and your occiput, your head and your neck. Mm -hmm. And I would like you to make really, have you studied micro movements in class at all? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's mm -hmm. feel micro movements at the AO joint here. Which direction? So all you do is intend that you're gonna move there, very small. Watch a minute, I'll show you, mm -hmm. okay? So this is not like in yoga, great big neck movements mm -hmm. that involve all of these outer, outer muscles, but rather very small. Mm -hmm. And what I'm doing is I'm just intending to let movement happen there, to let movement happen, not make it happen. And then let your neck show you what it wants. Okay. And so I'm going to start you with this space, because then you'll be more free. And if you want to shut your eyes, to, that's okay too. And just start to see what kind of movement wants to happen there. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're going very, very small, and that's good. You could go a little bigger, too, if you wanted to. And just, so this is nothing you're direct with your brain. It's not like three to the left, three to the right. But just letting your neck show you what it would like you, what it, what it wants to release. Mm. Yeah. And so it wants to go back into that pattern. That's okay. <laughs> so here is a question. It's, it's almost like the micro movements unwind. So where you have attention, it will go there and start to dissolve that pattern. So don't be afraid of going back there. That's, okay. where, you, that's where your micro movements take you. Your micro movements are like a solvent dissolve the uh, attention places. Mm. Yeah, that's it. Mm. Doing a very subtle inner place, and that's just fine. doing good what does that feel like um as i'm breathing in i'm thinking about just getting more space up through here so i think mm -hmm. the micro movement's going back and then when i let go i'm just kind of relaxing mm -hmm. it relaxes back so you're beginning to let your head respond to your breath i think so yeah so it's not only a question of position like more space here but also a question of allowing the movement to go through so our ideal in Roth movement is to have the entire fascial web respond to everything we do, which is, which is uh, our ideal. Mm. So what we do is we stop it. 
we tense, this is our pattern, so we tense and, t and tighten places and then the movement doesn't go through. And then we have impact. Where the movement doesn't go through, we have impact. Mm. And where we have impact, we have stress and often pain. Yeah. Cricks in the neck. Okay. So I'd like you to go back again now, not so much trying to do micro movements. Okay. A little bit more space. Yeah, I keep reminding you there. See if you can feel that line. If you come down just a little bit, feel the closing, and come back up again. Just tune into that thing of closing and opening. Yeah, already you're closing. Can you feel it? Mm -hmm. Not you're not closing as hard as oh. you were when you first started, but I wanted to feel what sensation that was. Yeah. yeah. Stay with it as long as you need. So now just imagine that your head is like a pile of seaweed on the beach. <laughs> okay? Uh -huh. And the wave of your breath washes up. Mm. Not only rocks the pile of seaweed, but fills it. Fills it and rocks it. Mm. So your breath is going to come right, can come behind your eyes, through the center of your head, right up to your crown. So this is in yoga called the crown chakra. Hopis call it the window to God. Mm. And Ida Rolf called it the top of your head. <laughs> With that intonation. <laughs> top of the head up, she would say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's it, that's it. Lovely. Feel that. Mm. That ability of the breath to rock the head. Gonna make you even smarter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll take that. <laughs> so I'd like to work a little bit with your upper thorax now. Yeah. I'm gonna slide my hands under your body. And I'm coming here's your spinous processes. Mm -hmm. Here's your costal groove. Mm -hmm. And so I'd like you to <clears throat> bring your breath to meet my fingers. So this is just a question of intention. This, it feels like this part of you, because, you've, because of your pattern of leaning back, this has been sort of asleep mm. in terms of your awareness. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. now I want to wake this up. Okay, so see if you can find me here. Ah, that's a little bit good. So why don't you take your left hand and put it on your chest and then just Press down a little and send the movement to meet my fingers in the back. There you go. Feel it? Yeah, good. And then, so you're making the breath go to the back. And now we're going to just let this open, spread out. Working with the width dimension of your movement now. Hmm. Yeah, feel how that shoulder can rest out a little bit. So now be aware of the shoulder breathing. So there's three places we can shut down breath in our thorax. One is the neck and the other is holding the shoulders. Mm. So we want to get the head breathing and the shoulder breathing. So bring your thought to here, to where my hands are on your shoulder now. And let the breath rock the shoulder. That's lovely. And, yeah. and I'm going to exaggerate the exhale. And then breathe into my hands and let the shoulder widen and widen. Yeah. And then feel the shoulder go back in. I'm helping here. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Now just feel that in and out movement of the shoulder. Good. 
That's a totally new sensation. Mm -hmm. Try resting your hand here, and then you'll feel with your hand moving with your breath and the shoulder moving with your breath, you'll feel how the arm, even the elbow, will change a little bit. Nice. How does your right shoulder feel compared to your left one right now? There's more awareness, it feels mm -hmm. more enlivened. It looks to me, looking down at you, it's also a little wider. Mm. Does that make sense to your experience? More spacious, I'd say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do that left one. Yeah. Let me just open this. So as soon as we start to let the breath into something, I just opens, fluffs up, and you become a, a, just literally a more open person. I like that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So now I'm again in your costal groove. And just feel the breath expanding here. See if you can find me here with your breath. Move my fingers. That's it. Good. Get this breath back waked up. Exaggerate the exhale a little. And then let's let the shoulder breathe right into my hands. Lovely. Yeah, the shoulder learned from the other one. You're very quick here. <laughs> This is all about what we, this is what we call the principle of responsiveness. That when we make a movement in any part of our body, the whole fascial web responds. Dr. Roth said, the arches breathe. These ones. Uh, <laughs> not because you have lungs there, but ideally the breath movement flows through the entire body. How about that for an ideal? <laughs> How are you doing here? Good. I'm, I'm kind of like just feeling excited about new the new possibilities opening up, and I'm like really hoping that I can keep this new mm, yeah. new possibility with me. Right. Yeah, it's going to take. What happens is you'll be um, finding yourself in your old pattern again, and then you go, oh, and you try the new. And you go in and out, and then pretty soon your body finds the new pattern to be more comfortable. At first, it's uncomfortably, it's uncomfortably unfamiliar, mm -hmm. and and then you have to get through that. Particularly when we play with your standing again. If I put you on top of yourself instead of leaning back, it's gonna feel like weird. Okay, <laughs> but we start re-educating the kinesthetic sense, mm -hmm. and then once you. Once you start to get used to it, you oh, you want to do it because it's more comfortable. <laughs> so, but it's a process, and and you want to be very non-judgmental about it. You know. Okay. No blame, no shame. When you find yourself back in your pattern, you just go, oh, here I am again, and yeah, notice it's tightening my neck. I think I want out of here, and then you change it. Okay. Okay. So I'm interested here now in working with some of this surgical trauma here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to have you bring your knees up. Sure. And remember when you were walking, when I showed you yourself in the mirror, how your low back was had a fairly deep arch there? Mm -hmm. So we want to, I would like to see that ease a little bit because that, do you ever have low back pain? 
Yes. Yeah, I thought you might. Yep. <laughs> okay. So if we can get that to be a, a little bit long. We want a curve there, but we want a, just a little bit softer curve so it's not quite so sharp. Mm -hmm. You're not putting so much pressure into the low back. So what I'm noticing when you inhale is that you push your belly up a bit. Mm -hmm. So keep the space under your chin. This all goes together. Yeah. Yeah, so just feel that, feel it with your own hand okay. here. You feel it, it's not too much, but right here at the end you do a little push. You yeah. Don't, you don't need to do that. Okay. So your diaphragm moving down swells the belly, but your belly muscles don't have to get active here. So I'd like you to bring your attention, remember the crura of the diaphragm? Crura is... Yeah. There's big muscles at the back of the diaphragm that attach to the lumbar spine and they draw the diaphragm down. They draw the diaphragm down and that's and when the diaphragm moving down causes the abdomen to swell, but you don't need to push it. Okay. So try this is more about getting into your back. Because in your pattern, this place right where the crua are mm -hmm. is really pushed forward and I'm imagining also that it's not a place that you have as much consciousness as other places. I noticed that when we did the exercise, the walking exercise. Mm -hmm. Say more. So when you had us walking around and feeling into the different areas of the body, I mm -hmm. noticed this whole region was not in my awareness. Yeah, yeah. Well, where something's been traumatized when you've had surgery, it does take time to bring consciousness back because Surgery is very traumatic. Mm -hmm. The body, your mind understands that you're doing it to make yourself better, but your body's response is that they're cutting me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, so it kind of freezes. So here's your crew up. And I would like you to just attend here. Again, it's like bringing your awareness to where my hands are. That's it, that's it. It's, so good. it's almost <laughs> counterindicated, you know, that the diaphragm moves down when it feels like the breath is filling up, but that's what happens. So let me let this, this come down. That's it, that's it. Good. Hmm, well. And then as you exhale, rest into that space that you just opened. That's it. Good, good. This is, I'm feeling, feeling a nice shift happening here. And then I just, I'm going to give you a little scoop towards your head, <laughs> okay? So as you inhale, at the same time that the crura are going down, let the breath come up and fill up under your clavicles. You don't need to push. Yeah, you see? When I say let the breath, I'm using, this is important for when you become a rough movement teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. You use passive language most of the time. That was one of the difficulties Dr. Rolf had. She was uh -huh. so directive. She'd say, get, the, get your elbows out, waistline back, you know, but then people would tense. Yeah. And she knew it. She, that's why she got other people to teach. Uh -huh. <laughs> but uh, using the passive language, let the breath float up there. It's, it's going to let the body respond differently than if you go, do it. <laughs> you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Just feel that come up and fill here. Yeah. And let, keep letting your head respond. Yeah. You actually have lungs, as you know, all the way up to here. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. That's it. That's it. All right. And this is being much quieter now. And as we quiet down some of the tension that you've been exerting with each breath, that should help the healing here also. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Might be 
help things come to balance more when things are softer. That's really neat. And when you did the, when you were feeling under here and allowing this to relax, mm -hmm. right after that I felt like all this peristalsis gurgly stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Great. Which has been lacking. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. So another way that we can talk about what we're doing in our off movement is we're moving from learning to move from center. And in our whole patterning in our culture, we tend to put a, as we say, put a front on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm guiding you toward your back here so that you can move more from center, so that you have your awareness at the center of your body instead of in the front. Mm. And especially here where there's been the trauma, you're kind of pushed forward. And that's one of the things that we do around surgery is we, we freeze it. We, Mm -hmm. Tighten it up. I've had a bunch myself, so I'm, I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> yeah. So what I'd like to do right now is just have you think about letting your abdomen really soften back on the exhale. And even more. Good. Especially down here in your lower abdomen. Almost like the energy of my hands is going to touch the front of your spine. Good. Mm -hmm. And let things soften right here, right where the scars are. Okay. I'm just staying with this a little bit longer because I'm, I'm zapping you a little bit. <laughs> okay. Mm. I'd like you to come and feel this. This is this is softened really beautifully right here. It's really resting back. You're still holding some tension right there under your under your right hand. Mm -hmm. But just this is something you can practice. I would suggest that you have, allow yourself some time to lie down, play with micro movements for your neck, space under your chin, all of that. Okay, and then softening here. See if you can feel that little moment when you tempt, you're tempted to push, mm -hmm. push up with this tummy. Okay. And when you push up with the tummy, that's pulling your lumbars forward. And so that's accentuating this. So as you let the abdomen rest back, the lower spine can lengthen and open more also. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I want to see you um, come to sitting now. Okay. Okay. Mm. Tell me what you're noticing. I found that I was holding here for a moment and then I noticed it and I tried to let that go. Um, so when you're working with your parkour and you're dancing, are you doing a lot of abdominal uh, holding? Oops, I didn't <laughs> <laughs> <slipped. laughs> uh, Doing a lot of abdominal holding. I'm sorry, could you start that question all over again? When you're working with your parkour? Yeah, when you're working with your parkour or your dance, are mm -hmm. you feeling like you're doing a lot of, you know, holding here? I think that's a possibility, but mm -hmm. I'm not tuned into it. Sometimes I just, walking around or whatever, I'll notice, oh, there's mm -hmm. tension. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll try and soften, but then it'll come back. I think it's at a subconscious level. Yeah, for the and most for part. some of the stuff that you're doing, like you're jumping and things like that in parkour, you probably need that. 
Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but then you don't have to keep it all the time that you're mm -hmm. going around through life. So how are you feeling sitting right now? I'm feeling that, I don't know if it's more length or like a less of the curvature of my spine, but I, um, my back feels different and maybe it's like a more mm -hmm. streamlined mm -hmm. position. Yeah. Here, here. Uh, I actually did bring the tape. Down. <laughs> there we go. All right. So now I'm going to shift you the same way that I did in the standing position. Oh, what, what's, okay. what's happening here is you're living with the front of your diaphragm higher than your back. So you're doing this. Okay. This. And what I'm doing is inviting the diaphragm to become horizontal. Okay. All this stuff that we do about horizontals. In raw fit. Okay. okay. So we're going to just come forward a little bit and then let this drop in the front just a hair and this length. Yeah. Tell me how you feel. I have the sense that I'm rounding forward. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> You're not. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So now go go to your familiar and just notice what you do. Chin comes down. Chest <laughs> goes up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And come back again. Yeah. There. And I allowed this to let go. So I want to give you a little bit of feedback here. Okay. Hold on. So that, does that help? <laughs> I think so. Yeah. So your kinesthetic sense so, yeah. is really a very strong influence, you know. And also, this is about all that I talked about with patterns too. This is all about oh, I gotta look good. That's look exactly good. what it is. And yeah. my breathing too. Like I thought, belly breathing is, you know, make this big and feel all the movement down here. So I've trained myself into this yeah. breathe here, and everything is because I thought this was lifting through the crown and yeah. being up Actually, night. your crown's heading off that way. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> so, no, I think so uh, come, come on top again. Yeah. And now just explore. Feel the breath in your back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. Why don't you put your hand on my back for a minute, between my shoulder blades. Just feel how the breath can move in the back. Mm -hmm. I can and see it in here. Uh. And this gets all shut down. Can't breathe there now. I see that. Yeah, so coming to center, we want to awaken the back. This is so coming here. So I'm going to shift you again just a little bit. Trust. Okay. I'm trying <laughs> so, to remember what the new the new sensation is. Okay. So again, when you're singing, mm. Mm, I had their same pattern, and I used to sing a lot. And I had this really interesting experience when I was in my teens. I was really working with my singing. My father was teaching me because we he was a musician. He taught both of us, and and uh, I remember he put these little marks on the place where I could breathe. Okay. You know, on yeah. the music? On the music, a little comma. Okay, you can breathe there. And I'd be <laughs> trying to get there without running out of breath. Mm. You may ex know that experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then years later, he had Alzheimer's, but he still played the piano. And he said, let's, let's sing. So I came, and he pulled out the music that I had out as a teenager. This was years after I'd been robbed. And... Uh, I could sing through six of them. Whoa. You know, because this was all had been so tight. So letting this soften will actually give you more breath. Yeah. Yeah? That's very exciting. Yeah. So your diaphragm is still very important in singing. Mm -hmm. Short inhale, long exhale. But just letting it drop down without pushing the stomach out will actually open up more breath here. Because when you push the stomach out, this shuts down. Mm hmm? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So try it. Just try it. Uh, and see how long you can last in your old position. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. Uh, Feel the crew will come down. Uh, hmm. What do you notice? 
instead of pushing the end through here, it mm -hmm. just, it seemed like it just extended naturally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Instead of like, <sighs> yeah, okay. Go ahead. Squeeze out the last drop of air. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's have you come to standing now. Okay. So you're going to lift in the back rather than think about dropping the front. Think about lifting in the back. And then take a breath and feel how the breath moves. You've gotten really quiet. What's happening? I'm just trying to feel it and it still feels so different that yeah. I'm not sure where the, yeah, you're the ideal... Yeah, a little bit freaked out. <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. I'm searching for it. Yeah, so now I'm going to have you bend forward. Okay. So now you really are bending forward. Okay, so we're taking, we're exaggerating this. Let your head go too. Okay. Yeah, you're bending forward. And now slowly straighten. And stop right about there. And take a breath. Go up here. Better, yeah. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. starting to feel it um, opening there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot happening here. Part of it's your pelvis doesn't know what to do with what we're doing up above. Okay. So we'll come, <laughs> come, we'll get to that. Why don't you take a walk? Okay. Lead with right here. Lead with your heart. Uh, And let your head respond. Just as when you're breathing. Let me take your hand. We'll do a little connection here. So this is what I call kinesthetic connections. So that you can feel me walking and walk with me. Okay. So again, let this come a little bit more back and this a little bit more up. And here we go. Just let your head respond. So wait, let your head respond. So when you walk, there's mm -hmm. an impact of your footsteps. Mm -hmm. And right now you've, you're really working hard on making space under your chin, but let it move. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and now walk. And just let that movement go through. Mm -hmm. That's better. Okay. That's, yeah, does that uh, feel more comfortable? Yeah, I feel more of the, this. Yeah. Integrated yeah. contralateral stuff. Watch a minute. If I hold my head still and walk, what happens to me? And if I let it go? You went from rigid to easy. Yeah. Holding the head still uh, is, is very restrictive. Okay. <laughs> so now, for some of the stuff you're doing in parkour where you have impact, you probably do need to hold your neck there. You don't want to. Okay. Mm -hmm. But... I don't know, I'm curious if she comes to you. Because uh, I'm thinking if you land, if you can have a little bit of resilience through your body, mm -hmm. it might be easier than if you land with a lot of tension. I'm not sure. Yeah. This is a new thing for me. Okay, so walking again. Just letting your head move. Walk a little bit. Oh, let's go a little faster. Look, we're going downtown. Okay. Yeah. How's that feeling? Is it beginning to feel a little bit more yeah. comfortable? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm doing it anymore, or, you know, uh -huh. I'm not sure what pattern I'm in now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go, take a minute, find your, find your familiar. Yeah, I think, yeah, okay, and walk. Okay, yeah, and feel what's happening in here and in your pelvis. And feel what's happening in your neck. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to shift. <laughs> okay. All right. Come here. I like to see you as well as touch you so I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so here. So let this come up and back. Yeah. And then where's your head? Oh, yeah. So maybe overdoing that a little bit. Okay. Yeah, you know your pattern. Your snooty pattern that you That's what about. I thought I was up here. Yeah, right. But when you lay down, you were here. But it's true. When you stand up, you're... you're. So now just let the oh, occiput... Oh, that's the interesting. Yeah. Because you were 
occiput and the jaw have a balance. Yeah. And you're still open here. Okay. So now you can, same as we're bringing you up in the back here, we're also bringing up in the back there. And now take a walk. Okay. Letting your head respond. It's just going to bobble on the top of you. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you doing? I'm sensing more uh, aliveness just through the whole mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. upper body and okay. midsection. Can you handle one more piece? I hope so. Okay. <laughs> Lie down. Let's go back to just letting this soften back. One of the things that happens when you get on top of yourself is this just wasn't knowing quite what to, where to go is what I was seeing. I felt that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so let's give it a little information. And we'll just sort of touch into this today and then in your next session we'll, we'll deepen it. Great. Let's, so. so I'm going to ask you to just roll your pelvis up. This way. And at the same time let your knees shift away towards your feet. Yeah. That's it. And I'm going to ask you to lift up and let me put my hand under there. This is sort of like, did you learn pelvic lifts in your the sacral cradle? Yeah. So you're going into unit two, right? Yes. Yeah, you'll be doing this next week. <laughs> okay, so now, rolling the pelvis up, let your first lumbar drop into my finger, which is here under you. Yeah, that's it. And feel the vector between your tailbone and that first lumbar. So what we're up to right now is getting a, <clears throat> a lot of things. Getting an individual axis of rotation for each lumbar. Well, yeah, instead of having them functioning like a block. Each one separately. Okay, so here's your first one. Now, feel the second one. Tilt up so the second one, yeah, that's it, drops into the table. And now feel where the third one is and drop that one in. Good. And keep these guys down, <laughs> okay? We're stretching the front of your spine here. And now here's L4, yeah, and five. And now let your sacrum, imagine that your sacrum can uncurl. And leave all of this soft. Let the sacrum uncurl. Stretch that anterior longitudinal ligament on the front of your spine. Good. And let the tailbone down. And now breathe, please. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? What's happening? Um... My body's like trying to figure out the thing to do. So you want the lumbar, like the um, the lordotic curve to soften. Yeah, for now. So that you, what I'm up to, two or three things here. Pelvic rock is one of the best pieces of the rock work in my opinion. I do it every day. We're looking at getting each lumbar to have its own axis of rotation. So there's which then allows the sacrum to rock a little when you're walking. Instead of being stuck, and right now you're moving around your sacrum uh, instead of through it. Mm -hmm. It also yeah. stretches the lumbar fascia. And it's also very calming to the nervous system, this movement of lengthening the lower spine. Mm. So let's try it again. So now, <clears throat> when you're teaching rough movement, you, you know, you use your hands, and then maybe our hands, and then maybe the client's hands. So that you hand it over. So I'm touching mm. you first, and then I'm going to have you feel it, and then I get out of there so that when you go home, you can work on it for yourself. And that's a really, yeah. those are important steps, I feel, in teaching rough movement, that you, that you turn it over to the, to the client. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to go this, this one together, okay? So begin the movement. If you feel like right here above your pubic bone, straight down from that is the top of your sacrum. 
So you're going to begin the movement right there and at the same time let the knees move away. Yeah, good. Good. A little bit easier here. And then when you feel your first lumbar on the table, then you can actually press through like I was doing here. And then let that down. Yeah. Pressing through here. I used to use my fingertips. <laughs> Yeah. Should I be moving my, I feel like. So as you roll up, your thighs move out. Mm -hmm. Your femurs move this way. And as you come down, they'll come back toward you again. Okay. Yeah, but that'll just happen. Kind of focus your attention on letting each vertebra come down separately. That's good. Mm -hmm. And then they're letting down even more. Try and relax your pelvic floor. Yeah. And then take a breath. And let your head move. So if we get the lumbars freed up, and then we also have free movement here in the cervicals, mm -hmm. and the whole rest of the spine starts to relax too. Yeah, so let's do some micro movements there. Yeah. Feeling your head respond. Yeah, you're sort of opening your core now. And then let's see another pelvic rock. And you do it on your own now. Okay. Just initiating right here. Yeah, keep the pelvic floor relaxed. Let the thighs go out. Going this way. Yeah. I have trouble letting go of the lower ones as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sensing like that putting my knees down is making me engage stuff that's hard for me to let that drop. Putting your knees down, explain a little bit. Oh, like pushing. So yeah. this movement of this. Yeah, think of the weight shifting right into your feet. Just kind of boom. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That helps. Yeah, yeah. Ideally, we're lengthening right here. So, <clears throat> um, if we want to have a horizontal pelvis, which is what allows us to stand vertically, we need to open this space up. So, that's why we're going in two directions to open this. Mm. Okay. I'm going to just touch into that today but I want to see how you walk differently from that. Okay. So now, again, just a moment of finding this. Yeah. And then this. Yeah, so that you don't end up with your snooty, snooty thing. <laughs> yeah, I had that one too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so now take a walk and lead with your heart. And now feel how you can move oh. through here. So before you've been kind of winding around your sacrum, uh -huh. but as the lumbars free up, then this can happen when you walk. Think, oh. of your, think of your spine as a chain and your sacrum's a pendant on the bottom of the chain. It's just going to rock with your walking. Okay, you see here? And then you see it go. Yeah. Feel it moving through instead of around. See if you can find out. So I'm giving you everything at once now. <laughs> See if you can let your head respond. And we 
can bring you a little more on top of yourself. There you go. As if you're gonna, <clears throat> as you go for, you must know this from when you're doing your jumping and parkour. Mm -hmm. You have to be going where you're going. You can't jump right. somewhere if you're back here. Yes. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so the same thing walking. Just let the let yourself fall into your walking. Lean lean into it a little bit. Uh, yeah. Okay. Why don't you have a seat? Okay. I think we'll stop there and I want to just review for you mm -hmm. for a few minutes. And this is I think a really important step in doing a lot of movement session is that you don't let your client walk out going, oh, I was neat, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> so I want to just go back over what we did. We started with you lying down, and we started with finding space under your chin. So you've got a paradox here. When you're standing, you tend to go here. And when you're lying, you tend to go here. So just play <laughs> around with that. So there may be more to discover about that. But just have some awareness of where is this jawline? And is the space closed? Or, is it, or am I closing the space back here? Mm. So, this is, so just be aware of it as you go about in your day. Where is my head? How does it feel in different positions? And bring your questions back. OK. OK. So then we worked in your back, getting your shoulders breathing. Mm. And we worked with head response, micro movements for the neck, and then just letting the head move with the breath, which you got to, you were doing it really beautifully. Yeah. OK. Then we worked some with the crew of the diaphragm moving down. And that was letting your abdomen soften back towards your spine. And then we worked with a pelvic rock. And some walking and balancing. Yeah? Does mm -hmm. that all feel clear? Yes. <laughs> okay. Except just thinking about how I can continue to incorporate or... Mm -hmm. um, keep going into a better patterning. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the only thing where I'm like, so which way is, where am I straight? But I'm yeah. gonna f probably just bring more awareness and find more comfort. So one of the things you can play with, with your head, yes. is um, <laughs> come to the mirror. Okay. <laughs> Look straight into your own eyes. So your eyes are like bubbles in a carpenter's level. Uh -huh. You know, when you're level-headed, <laughs> they're in the middle. And if you're too low, you'll be looking up at yourself. Can you see that? So between my top and bottom eyelid, I should see. So can you see how? Like a you, symmetry of. Can you see how you're looking down now? To see, to look into your own eyes, you're looking down at yourself. I think so. <laughs> yeah, you're looking at, look into your own eyes, and you're sort of looking down at yourself. You're looking from the and then if you're. Here, you're looking up at yourself. See the white under the brown of your eyes? Yes. And when your head is level, you'll be looking straight into your own eyes. Mm, OK. You can play with that when you comb your hair. <laughs> <laughs> OK. So I would suggest that you just lie down and mm. <clears throat> play with your breath. Feel it in your back. Play with your head. Play with your micro movements. And I'm using the word play for sure. Okay. And every time, so don't get too heavy handed about it. And every time that you find yourself back in your old pattern, here you go, you know, then mm -hmm. be con totally compassionate about it. We talked about all the reasons you get into your patterns. Mm -hmm. So you just go, oh, here I am again. And you can stay in it a while and feel it more. Oh, this really does make my neck hurt. And mm. then shift it and see how it feels. So okay. you, it's a playful thing, and you're changing your, you're changing your charisma also. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as you want, as you were working toward becoming a rolfer, you want to have. We'll talk more about this too as we go along, but you want to have a neutral charisma, that isn't, doesn't have an attitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so as you get here, you you put a little off-putting, 
Or if you go here, then they wonder if you really can do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're looking for creating that neutral charisma where you can just be present without projecting a lot of your stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I get that. Yeah. All right. I think we'll stop here for today. Okay. And I look forward to continuing with you. Thank you so much. Yeah.